Appalachian manner. And it, it includes their un, uh, uh, extraterritorial jurisdictional area, their ATJ area as well. So any expected or proposed urban growth that Kings Mountain uh, would have for the next decade, that's why the boundary has been expanded just to the point that it has. Just, just to verify, I believe when I read it, it said you have the option that doesn't say they require you to. We do have the option, but we... Yeah, that, that, I, guess, I guess my whole thing is, is we've talked about this thing, we've discussed it, back and forth, and I thought we'd come to an agreement. And here you are bringing something to us entirely different from what this group voted on. Period. We have met. And, and I, I really think it's, it's usually because you're looking for funding, no. or you're looking for fire grab, or you're looking for something. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like the way you're going to approach it because I'm the RPO representative. First time I saw this thing is when it was on the agenda. And that's not right. We have met with you, Mr. Hudson. That's right. We met. We met on a number of occasions. The last time we met, your group voted that they would take King Mountain and ETJ, and that's all it's taken. Am I right, Bill? That was the vote that we had. That that is so primarily out. that boundary that yeah. we have around King's Mountain. We we did not expand it. It's not in any larger. We actually contracted it since the last meeting. Oh, uh, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. We actually so, so the last map. Let me let me let me show you the last map you had, and I started to bring out should have is only in the color of King's Mountain because you had three different options to take, and this is the largest option. And the third option was the smallest option, just Kings Mountain and ETJ. Well, we did exclude all of Grover. We only have a small sliver there. The actual boundary that I recall actually went a little further west. It actually went way further west, and it kind of just made a little angle all the way down to the county county line. Um, and we've excluded it. We, we cut it. We cut it significantly. I, I can't tell you that. Yes, we, we we cut off this entire red chunk. Yeah, well, I, I know you cut it from, from what it was. The last time we met in Dallas, <coughs> the last discussion we had, you were only going to take in Kings Mountain and the ETJ of Kings Mountain. Was it? That, that's correct. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Now you're coming that, back for something different. And that's primarily what that map is, except for that sliver of the 85 corridor down the road. And that's the only thing that is I guess the next question, you said we don't have to participate. But if we don't participate, you're still going to take over the area and we just don't have no say so. Is that correct? That is correct. So it, it's, in my sense, it's like I referred to it when we had the last meeting. It's annexation without representation. The Central Carolina is coming in and saying, this is what we're going to do. You've got no choices, but there are some choices. I've got several several questions and several concerns as well. Uh, you and I have not met before, Mr. Graham, but I, I appreciate you coming tonight and explaining to me what, what y'all uh, are intending to do. <coughs> um, one of the main concerns I've got with it is, is uh, this essentially, and, and the map that y'all have provided to us for our agenda tonight is not the map that we agreed on whenever we, this body, voted on the section that, that, that we were uh, willing to look at for the MPO. Um, so I guess the concern I've got is one of the same concerns that Commissioner Hudgens got is um, we were asked how much uh, we gave our opinion on what we would like to see and that was disregarded. And this is a, uh, I'm looking at this as a first step and you know, y'all are trying to build a relationship with us. Um, this is a, a terrible first step. Um, so I, 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 don't, I don't like the track record we're on already. Um, after talking with Commissioner Hutchins today, and he's our, he's our board representative on this, and I was just appointed as an alternate uh, on our, as well, but, uh, Commissioner Hutchins mentioned that there, there are some options that we have. The, the concern I've got is, is that we've got um, 
Lake Monarchia handles the majority of our county, um, which is a, a bunch of counties that are coming in and helping us decide how we're going to um, how we're going to develop our county and our, our plan. Um, I have problems with that to begin with. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like we we don't really get the representation personally that, that we deserve out of that. Um, now we're taking another part of our county and dividing that into 1,600. So, well, we will be the <coughs> urban MPO that will be representing the south, southeast on corner of the. Well, uh, what I'm saying is there's 16 other oh, the yeah, communities, yeah, communities that would have that would have a say so in how we're developing our county that is separate than these other. That is other entities. So right. we're dealing with two different bodies of, of, of uh, regional governance um, that is going to make it extremely difficult. Um, and Mr. Graham, just to give you an idea, on one of the first votes I got to take on this board was, I thought was one of the, the uh, oddest uh, votes I've been asked to take, and that was on our con comprehensive transportation plan. <coughs> From my understanding, the, uh, the only necessary um, thing that we get out of being a member of a regional council of government is that we get a, a, a CTP uh, design for us. And we have to have that in order to get DOT funding. Is that correct? Okay. The comprehensive transportation plan that we had presented to us, we were told at the night that I voted on, uh, was a uh, pie in the sky. It was a Christmas wish list. It was not planning it was something that would we did we're not going to expect bike trails in every county um, that was something that was i think there was railroad spurs up there as well railroad uh, axles, Rail, right, right. Uh, there's there's all kinds of things that we just realistically can't afford uh, we can't expect to see and it's well, uh, the best thing for in my mind for planning is, is to know what would you realistically, realistically expect and work on those things? Get all this other stuff aside. All that being said, 16 new bodies of government having uh, an opinion on what we should do with Cleveland County. My understanding from talking to Commissioner Hutchins was that there is another option, um, and that is a. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Or do you want me to is, is to, to contact our state legislators and ask them to uh, exempt us from this MPO, um, exempt us from having to go through this, this process um, with the Gaston MPO. Um, that makes the most sense to me. Um, we, are, we are splitting uh, our <coughs> control of our county and our, our development of our county between so many different organizations, um, I think we need to limit those. The people that need to determine, uh, we need to work across borders, and I understand that. Um, you, you can't, we can't plan just the roads in Cleveland County, they've got to connect somewhere else. Our primary focus in Cleveland County are the residents of Cleveland County. It's evident from what I've seen on the map tonight that the people of Cleveland County was not the first, uh, the first thing looked to whenever that map was expanded. It was the benefit of the MPO. That's that's just the way it looks to me. So um, you mentioned it was going to cost us twenty four hundred dollars a year to be a member. Yes, sir. And there are some other differences between us and the RPO. I, I understand. The, the total cost though, Keats Mountain would have to pay thirty one hundred dollars a year. Correct. Okay. So total cost for Cleveland County. I mean, you know, we've, we've got municipalities here, but we look at Cleveland County as a whole. So the cost for Cleveland County to be involved in this is um, six thousand dollars and less. Um, Cluster Rover wants a voting member, then you can they can pay an extra five hundred to be a voting voting member. <coughs> my my recommendation to this board. After hearing what, after hearing what you said, is one more. Well, I'm sorry, one more question. Have you already presented City Keys Mountain? 
No, you you guys are the first. Okay. And you're going to be out of all of them. Thank you for thank you for seeing us first. Um, my recommendation would be uh, one is to uh, um, maybe look at the resolution um, if, if the board so chooses, asking our state legislators to uh, exempt us from this uh, MBO or requirement to join MBO. Um, the other is um, contact the city of Kings Mountain. Uh, I, I, personally, I would like to see our county manager contact the city of Kings Mountain and talk with, um, talk with the mayor there and uh, explain to him what we're looking at. Um, it's their choice, I guess. Is that right? The city of Kings Mountain could do this. No, they do not have a choice at all. They do. They do if, if the state, if the state, state passes legislation, they do. If the state does. <laughs> Our, my communication was with the Federal Highway Administration staff, okay. and I don't even know the state legislation comes from. It, it, uh, Bill and I read it in the okay. Bill and I read it in those rules that night. We went over that's one of the things. The other two things, really quickly, is, is contact us with our, see if they would be willing to look at um, at working with Cleveland County, and the other is to uh, contact the UNC School of Government for an alternative method for developing our uh, CT. Yes, we are required to have our MOU adopted and finalized by the end of March. Okay. Now, commissioners, do you wish to look into other directions and then put it back and put it on our agenda again in March? We have to have that information. People can see the month of February. Uh, this end has to spoken again, so we'll, yeah. we'll make one quick statement. Mr. Hutchins is our RPO representative of the board, and we normally try to do things in a cooperative spirit and uh, support each other and operate together. And all the other points excluded, they're important. I don't mean that they're not important when I say excluded. They are important, but it greatly bothers me that our RPO representative comes into a meeting, uh, lack of a better word, being blindsided with a representation, with a presentation. And, and as a county commissioner, uh, my loyalty to the county and to my record fellow commissioner, uh, really, I don't get that, don't understand that, don't really appreciate that. Uh, uh, as Commissioner Hall said, it's certainly not a good person. I have the, the same thoughts as the rest of the group here. I feel like that we need to have a better understanding. I guess I'm not real clear on, again, on why we voted one time. There was an address on it, and all of a sudden tonight we can then we have more additional areas of our county included on it. And I agree with what uh, Commissioner Hubbard said as far as our RPO needs to be more informed about it. We as a group need to collectively understand that. Any comments or did I grab a motion? Well, uh, you know, I, I guess I did. I, I took it personally because I felt like that when we met and we spent several weeks talking about it, this wasn't what was presented. It was a lesson plan and how to come up with this. And my concern is, is like Mr. Paul said, was putting that county among different areas. He talked about 15 different voting members. That's 15 voting members from Gaston County. Like Gaston City, Gaston County has got, what, two or three, and each one of the issue policies throughout Gaston County has got one. So that's a that's a 15 to two vote. That concerns you to start with, you know, it, it, even if you've done it. And, and, and you said, well, Years to come, there's not going to be one planning organization. And you remember my comment was, well, let's go for the whole county and let's combine the two counties and give each one equal voting rights to balance it out. So that that wasn't took into consideration. So we, we spent a lot of time in trying to come up with this plan. And for some reason, 
get with change. So, I, I, I think what the Jason and I talked about, I think we need to preclude any action to halt this at the time, whether it's legislative or legal action. And in doing some research, they didn't have it in it, but I do know they said that uh, the state government can exempt us, can pass a law that the MPO cannot exceed their boundaries into another county. Even with this mandate you, you talk about, even with the mandate, that, that was something that we read. And uh, I think that that's, that's the way to go at this time because we start splitting the county up and gas only takes 20% of it, and the next thing you know, uh, Lincoln becomes the MPO and they want to come in on the lower end. I think you didn't take Cheryville and some of the other areas again. So, you know, they're, they're staying in the RCOs and different things. I think our best thing right now is to stay with the RCOs. You know, to stay with one planning area to help. Well, I understand that we have to make a decision on what to do. You need to make a decision unless you want to pursue the option of going to the state legislature. You have the option of either signing on to this MPO as proposed or opting out. And I think Mr. Hutchins had mentioned, you know, his interpretation of opting out, but we would still have the boundary the way it is on the map there, and you guys would not have no, my, to No, my, my interpretation is the state passes a legislature stating that you cannot cross the boundary lines, then you don't come into Cleveland County at all unless it's a volunteer base. Right. We can be King's Mountain. Okay, if, that's my understanding. If, if, if we, we opt out. Yes, but, but if you opt out, what I'm, I'm thinking right now, without state enabling legislation, if you were to opt out now, which is another choice that you have before you today, if you opt out to pay, to sign on to this MP, MOU, and to have a vote, we would still submit that boundary on the map, on the, on the wall up there, and we would still do transportation planning for that geographic area in Clinton County. And you guys would not have to pay, and you would not have to pay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, is this in order to make a motion? Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to make a motion since our RPO representative wasn't really informed coming into this prior to the last meeting, and since we have a lot of questions, that we give him a chance to clarify everything where he feels comfortable, it comes back to us at our next meeting and says, this is what I propose. Uh, so I would make a motion that we table this thing, give Commissioner Hutchins a chance to review everything, come back, to the next meeting with a recommendation from our RPO representative. Got a motion that we table the decision on the MPO and that the direction his direction would be to try to find all the information he can until I get the meeting. That's correct. That's correct. I have a second. I'll second. Um, any other discussion? north of that area. Uh, 
in the intersection of Walker Switch Road and Laurel Road. So we're asking tonight that you expand that brown area to include uh, those additional parcels and also code them as light and heavy industrial. And you see the Shelby DTJ just below that. And uh, some of those parcels down there are also included in that industrial park that's currently being developed. Switch uh, business park, and uh, so this is the park we bought uh, a couple years ago that we were probably recruiting uh, for heavy and light industrial. And that's all stuff I had to pay to see deer industrial park with somebody that put a name on it, right? <laughs> no, that, that's not the deer industrial park. We're that's the clear water. That's the clear water. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we need to revise the land use plan. Next case is 1809 Isaac Place, and I believe you have a memo from the owner of this property. He was not able to attend the meeting tonight. Now, this is a new owner. Um, he acquired the property. Just 
as the current owner does. Not only that, but uh, I mean, would it be a waiting process? No. Like it, it would really the the ownership uh, is irrelevant in terms of the time frame. The the new owner just inherits the old owner's problem. Seven Shank Farm Road. Uh, this owner did come by yesterday and uh, he works at night, so he was, he was not able to come at night either. Um, the uh, owners in this case are also children of uh, the previous owner, and of course, the dwelling has been burned. I think he said 18 years ago it was burned, and uh, Harley Phillips as well. But uh, he would also like to have his property demolished. He just doesn't want a lien on the property, which would happen if we demolished it. Um, I don't know whether he could individually get a building or a burning permit to do that burn on his own. Um, that, that may be an option. But uh, I don't think there's any emergency in this case either. But if you'd like to. This is a family situation. If you'd like to give them additional time or if you'd like us to go ahead and do it, I can work with him either one. What would you suggest for the conversation? He would like to see it demolished. He doesn't want to incur a lot of costs. Uh, if we hire a contractor and go in and demolish it and carry it off, then of course there's going to be a cost there that will be placed on the property in the form of a lien. Uh, if he, demolishes it himself or burns it himself, then there may not be any cost on his end. Would the lien have to be, the lien, the lien just has to be paid at the home sale of property? That's correct. Is the property worth the amount to the cost of it? Got a land value of $15,725. No, something smaller lot.